Uh, before I start as well, um, you, there's not many tables, but there's some of these around the back. Uh, this is starting this Tuesday, Spirit in Life. Uh, if you want to know more, there's a website on the bottom where you can scan this fancy barcode and it'll get you right there. And you can sign up. Um, some people have some questions. Uh, do I have to be there every time? Is it a commitment for 12 weeks? That would be great, but it's not mandatory. You can come anytime. It will just be progressive in the teaching. And so uh, we're hoping to record it as well. So that is an option as well. But it would be very good to be here if you're wanting to do that as well. All right. I was talking to Steph, my wife, uh, on the way here, and I was saying that uh, a lot of times when I, when I get to speak, wherever it is, uh, I feel like I'm really prepared, and sometimes I feel like I'm totally not prepared. But the one thing that happens all the time is I, I, I pray. Uh, while I'm preparing and on the way to and just before I'm about to, just thanking God. Thank you, God, that you're with me. Like, this isn't all up to me. I'm not God. I'm just his mouthpiece for this moment. <laughs> and I believe that. So a lot of the times I'm, I'm speaking and I'm getting revelation. Like, I listen to my own messages because, I'm like, whoa, what did I say? Like, God does that to me. It's really awesome. And I feel like there's been this, uh, this theme going around of the Holy Spirit and faith and knowing God. Jim was talking about knowing. And we know that uh, the Bible de definition of salvation is knowing God and Jesus Christ who he sent. That's the definition of salvation, so knowing God and Jesus Christ, whom he sent. So I want to talk a little bit about knowing today, and it involves faith and promises and a bunch of cool stuff. I'll let you decide if it's cool, but... Um, so does, it, does anyone know a difference between knowing and, and believing? Like, if you know something, you know it. Usually, if you know something, you've, you've seen it, and you're 100% confident about it. So, for example, Jim could tell me that he can do a handstand from there to there. I'm like, I, I believe you, because you told me. Like, I don't believe you're a liar. Like, I, I believe it. But if I see him doing it, I know he can do it. And I'm going to tell everyone. Anyone says, oh, he can't do it. Oh, I know he can do it. I've seen it. <laughs> So that's, uh, I feel like as, as Christians, a relationship with God is knowing God, right? And if we never see God, if we don't see God doing the handstand, if we don't see him doing what he says, we can believe, but that conviction, you know, that thing that really, that moves our feet and moves our mouth and moves our hands is hesitant, you know? And I pray that we'd all have that knowing and such a confident knowing and where you can't help it. You are compelled to love, like Gil was saying. You know, all, all, everything we're talking about, Holy Spirit, gifts, we want to see healings, we want to grow in God, do all this stuff. Like, we, we need to know God. We need to know God's love. That's it. That's the only thing we're, we should we don't need to chase after any of that stuff. We need to chase after love. And that's complete selflessness and looking just like Jesus. So when it comes to faith, you know faith is built on God's word, right? God's word and God's promises. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. I was saying this the other day that faith, um, you can have faith in other things. You can keep hearing and hearing and hearing the news every day, and you just believe it, right? Or your friends or your colleagues or whatever, and you just believe it. Or that same ad that pops up on Facebook all the time, all of a sudden that's, oh, I got that symptom now. Oh, no, oh my goodness. You know? It's very important, God's word. Like it's, you know that Jesus is God's word. 
I had this little revelation a while ago how um, I wasn't reading my Bible much, and, and I'm praying, God, I love you. I love you, Jesus. And, and God's like, do you love the word? I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. So, you know, Jesus, God is the word. Jesus is the word. So if I say to my wife, I love you, I love you, love you, and never hang out with her, well, it's, the proof's in the pudding, you know? It's, it's what I'm doing that shows the reality of my conviction, you know? And it's just so good. If you just get in there, Jesus is everything. He's, he's you know, love is all we need. That's actually true. <laughs> love is all we need. You know, in the, in the wilderness, we were singing that song, uh, Israel, the manna came down from heaven, right? Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I am the manna that came down from heaven. He was a sustenance of God to the Israelites every day, all the time. And you know a cool part about that? That there was never too much. He didn't allow it to be so they could hoard it up. They needed to live off of Jesus every day. Every day. He's the word every day. So the old revelations, those were for yesterday. Let's get into the new. Let's get into the new. The new. I just got that last week. I'm like, that is such a good word. That's so good. So uh, faith is built on God's word and his promises. And Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, right? It's a substance of something. So it's not hope itself because hope is a confident expectation of the future. Something happened. And faith is now. All right? If we uh, turn to Mark 11, if you have your Bibles or you can follow here, Mark 11, 22. It says, then Jesus said to his disciples, have faith in God. Because sometimes we have faith in our faith or how good we are, or what I said, or how I said it, or I've been fasting, or I've been doing this, and yeah, I'm a good Christian now. But have faith in God. I tell you the truth, you can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen. But you must really believe it, believe it will happen, and have no doubt in your heart. I tell you, you can pray for anything, and if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. At first glance, that last uh, scripture, I, it says, if you believe that you've received it, so you have it, it will be yours eventually. Like, at first glance, that doesn't make any sense, right? <laughs> okay, I believe I have it, and then I'm going to get it. What? How can you have something before you get it? You see that everything that is physical was made from the spiritual. So God is spirit and everything was created from the spirit, right? If you believe you have it, you have it according to God's word because faith comes by hearing and hearing over and over again the word of God and it will manifest itself physically. So you have it spiritually and then it will come out but we can't let go of it either. We can't, like, faith in God's word and God's promise is not a point in time. We always want to make, oh, I need this now. I need this by this moment, by this day. My friend's sick. My dad's in the hospital, whatever it is. I need it. I need it. But faith is not a point in time. It's you have faith, and that's it. You have faith. Because time goes by, and like, oh, I guess it didn't work. So it's like it's a method that we're trying, but it's not that. It's a belief. It's a knowing. I know this. I am fully convinced. I've seen it. I've seen it happen. Like no one can unconvince me that that's not true. Like that's what the disciples had. That's why they lived their lives and died, a lot of them brutal deaths. That's why Jesus lived the way he did, because he was fully convinced Fully convinced. And if you really, if you want to go through a good word study, go through Hebrews 11, talking about that. It, I was writing this down. It was so Holy Spirit. 
And then I felt like you said, read Hebrews 11. I'm like, whoa, this is almost word for word what I wrote down. This is amazing. It's so good. Do you think that Jesus knew? Do you think that he had faith? Or was he just in hope? Like, for example, when he was at Lazarus' tomb. You think he was like, okay, God, um, yeah, just uh, help me out here. And then he prays. And he's like, oh, thank you, Lord. Yes, it happened. No, he knew. He knew. He knew. In uh, John eleven forty one, it says, so they rolled the stone aside, and Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me. But I say it out loud for the sake of those people standing here so that they will believe you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out. And then he came out. He was alive all of a sudden. Like Jesus, he's like, he's not begging God for this. He's not, he didn't even ask God. He, he thanked God for what he already had. He's like, I know I'm the resurrection and the life. Come out. Thank you, God, you hear me. And we're commanded to live and walk and talk and act and do everything like Jesus. So I can say, thank you, Lord. I prayed. I have hope for something. So then I can have faith for something. And I ask God for something. Then I'm like, thank you, God. I got it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You always hear me. You heard my prayer. I don't have to repeat myself over and over. Yeah, I, you've heard me. I know it. But if I don't know it, I'm like, God, just to make sure, I'm going to, can you give me this? Can you give me this? And then we have point in times and we have all those things that kind of block us up. But Jesus' example is like, thank you, God, you hear me. And he said it for the sake of those around him so they could believe. Like, you hear me? You hear me, people? He hears me? You can hear him, you know? He's your father too. It's so encouraging to see, like, to see Jesus, how, how graceful and everything, that, how he talked and how he moved. And it's, it's exciting. Like, obviously, like, I'm not there, right? I'm not, everyone I'm praying for isn't being healed, right? So there's room to grow, and that's so exciting. There's always more. There's always more. It's, it's never a place of, oh, man, I'm not good enough, Oh, I should have done this. I should have done that. That's self-condemnation, and that's the opposite of God. That's not what he wants. So Jesus put action to his faith by calling out Lazarus. His love is what love is compelled to do. That's what love does. You know, faith without works is dead. Faith without saying you have faith and not doing anything about it is useless. That's what he's saying. So even Jesus' actions, like getting everyone's attention, we, that wasn't too hard for Jesus. Everyone was around him. Roll the stone away. But he's been in there four days. It's going to stink. Didn't I tell you? <laughs> you will see the glory of God. <laughs> he's bold. Like imagine someone doing that nowadays. Dig up that grave. If you have faith, it can happen, right? Like that's, that's not a, a small thing, but it's not a big thing either if you believe. And uh, this uh, revelation came to me a little while ago. You know, Jesus, Jesus uh, what I was talking about before, Jesus is the word walking around in a body. You know, the word of God decided to make a human and live in that human and fully personify God in that body. The word itself is perfected in Jesus because he was the word. So it's not just a doctrine. It wasn't just a doctrine in him. It's not just what I believe and this is it. Like, it's a way of living, it's a way of life. And that's for every, everyone who calls himself Christian means Christ-like one, little Christ, right? 
that's so exciting to me. Like, Jesus didn't just say, okay, like, you know, when the Holy Spirit came, he said, it's good that I go. And disciples are like, no, 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 don't leave. You're the best thing that ever happened to us. Like, we can't even fathom anything better than you. They're just thinking to themselves, I, I need this, I need this, I need this. We're in this inner circle. Everyone else is out. We get all the good stuff, you know. We don't want to leave that. But it was good that he would go so the Holy Spirit could come live in all of us. The Holy Spirit lives in our bodies, which are the temple now, not the place that we have to go. And like, like this, it's a great place so we can come and gather. But God's living in these temples, Right? It's so incredible. The word, if you want to know how to be perfect, look at Jesus. His life lived is to be modeled and commanded that we do that. We can do That means we can. That's really exciting to me. Like This, this is the good news, the gospel. The, good, the gospel means the good news. Like Jesus was preaching good news. Guess what, cripples? You don't have to be crippled anymore. Guess what, blind man? You don't have to be blind. And people just believed, and they touched his, his garment, and all of a sudden they were healed. Like there was a lot of healing going on. And then he gave power to the disciples, and, the, and then the 40, and they all did it. And like, whoa, God is moving, and the people. So amazing. So Jesus, he already had his answer. He didn't ask for something he already had. He just thanked God for it. It's like, thank God that you hear me. You have answered my prayer based on the word. For me, that's what I would pray. Thank you, God, that you hear me. You've answered my prayer based on your word, on your promises. Jesus was the word. So everything he said was the word. So he was pretty confident in, in what he said because he's being led by the Holy Spirit. He was a, a man fully led by the Holy Spirit in perfect relationship, perfection. So when he prayed for someone instantly, all the time, everybody, like total, complete. And we're not there yet, but we're all going forward. I just wanted to go through some amazing, amazing promises. I feel like God is, uh, in this last season of, of the church, I feel like, has, has been really brought out to me. Uh, I'll go to uh, 2 Peter 1, 2 verse 3. It's in the NLT version, it says, By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. You see that word after? God has? That means like in the past. That is the biggest promise I've ever seen. God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. Like, what else do you pray for? We're done. Like, and then it tells you, it goes on, explains it. We always have to keep reading. We have received all of this by coming to know him, which is salvation. The one who called us to himself by the means of his glory and excellence. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature. Isn't that amazing? Divine, his divine nature. And escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. There's like so much packed in there. He's given us everything we need. It's all through knowing him. And that enables these promises. We share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption. We're no longer corrupt those human desires are not our desires anymore. Those are the old man that is supposed to be dead, right? And then one more in uh, Colossians 1.20. If you want to read a book, pretty short book, Colossians, read that. That will just transform 
Read it like as many times as you can. Uh, Colossians 1, 20 to 22. And through him, God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by the means of Christ's blood on the cross. This includes you. Isn't that cool? He made peace with you. There's peace. This includes you, who were once far away from God. You were his enemies. So see all that, the were, see that word were? You were his enemies. Who were once far away from God. You were his enemies, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. So what now? That means we don't have evil thoughts and actions. This is probably the, the biggest revelation that I've got in my Christian walk. Those, those temptations or those thoughts or those evil desires, they are now coming from the outside, trying to get in, not from the inside. Like they're not in us. All things are made new. I have a new spirit, a new heart, the mind of Christ, all that stuff. So that stuff, whenever lust or whatever comes to my mind, that's not me. That's trying to convince me that I'm that old man again. Like that changed everything. I realized I'm, I'm not that horrible sinner that I was. Even though the enemy's trying to convince me that I am, that's not me. Thank you, God, that you hear me. And <laughs> you know me. Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence. And you are now holy and blameless. And you stand before him without a single fault. It's not crazy. It, we're, we're fault. It doesn't matter if you sinned yesterday. God's not keeping a record of that. He's got this sea called forgetfulness where he throws that stuff into. If we're repentant and we, and we don't want to live that way, if we mess up and, like, oh, God, I'm so sorry, that's proof that you've changed. Because before that, before the change, you didn't think about it or you didn't care or whatever the reason was. It's like, oh, let's hide that somewhere. But when you're truly sorrowful and repentant in your heart, like, I'm like, God, I don't want to do that anymore. That's proof that you've changed. If you don't have that, then I would question. But you are holy and blameless and stand before him without a single fault. That's just so freeing. Freeing and liberating, like, Incredible. So incredible. I don't know what else you can do after that. He's given you everything. He's made you holy. He's made you blameless. Like, we're not waiting for our, our ticket to be punched to go to heaven. Like, we don't just get saved, and then that's, that's, the, that's the end goal, yes, to be with him forever. We're with him now, but, like, in, in heaven, I, I get that. But there's so much to live for here. He wants us to walk and talk and, and breathe and act and give like Jesus gave, to give his life. We overcome by the word, we're the Lord. What's the other one? The last one, that, yes. Love not your life unto death. So that's, we always hear the first two, right? The word of God and the, or the word of our testimony. But, yeah, living your life, unto, not loving your life unto death. Like, that's what the disciples did. That's what the men and women of God did in the Bible who loved God. They didn't love their life, even if they had to die for it, for their belief. That's where the power is in the last one. Because if you can be convinced otherwise, then, oh, you'll, you'll take that way out, Right? I just want to read one more scripture. Uh, John 6, 28 to 29. 
Um, so a guy comes up to Jesus and asks him, like, what, what do you require? Like, what do I have to do? So they said to him, what shall we do that we may, may work the works of God? And Jesus answered and said to him, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. So I was like, what action can I action to do what God wants me to do? Your action that you should action out is believe me. Like, we have to, like, we have this, this thought in our minds a lot of the time. I know I did. Like, okay, I, I have to do something for God, right? I have to show, what, how do I show my faith? This is a very good one. <laughs> believe me. And if you believe me, then you'll do what I say. And it won't be out of compulsion. It won't be out of because I have to or that's the way it should be or that's what Christians do. It'll be because I love. Because I've seen love in action. I've seen Jesus in front of me. I know him. I'm coming to know him more and more all the time because I'm in his word, because I'm praying to him, I'm loving people. I'm loving myself so I can love others. I'm not loving myself over others. That's called selfishness. <laughs> Preferring me, I'll, I'll take this last cookie because I want it, or whatever, you know? So yeah, the... The message today I felt God was saying is knowing God. To know God is to, to be saved, to be set free, whole, delivered, everything. Everything is in that. And it's much more than, than a thought and a belief. It's seeing the action. And it should be seeing the action of Jesus. So not comparing yourself to the next Christian or the or the, the pastor on TV that, that fell into adultery or whatever, like, oh, my goodness, like, that's what non-Christians always throw at you, right? They're comparing us to other people. Like, that's, yeah. Compare ourselves to Jesus, that's it. Not to ourselves, because we all have places where we need to grow. None of us are perfected yet. So yeah, Lord, I just thank you. Thank you so much, God, that we can know you. Thank you that we can believe in your son and what he's done. And that works that we're to do is to believe in you, to believe in your son and your promises. I thank you, God, that you have given us everything we need for living a godly life. For living life godly, like God. <laughs> Thank you, God, that we're not some worms in the dirt, that we're not some horrible sinners, that we've been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his loved son. Thank you, God, that we have the mind of Christ. We think like Christ. Thank you, Lord, that we have new hearts Thank you, God, that our old nature has been cut away and replaced with a new nature, Lord. Thank you for your promises that enable us to share your divine nature and escape world's corruptions. Thank you, God, that you made us holy and blameless and without a single fault. You did that. I didn't do that, and I couldn't do that, and I can't do that. And it's not my righteousness that I have. Jesus said that if, you, if your righteousness is not passed out of the Pharisees, you'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. They had self-righteousness. But we have righteousness bestowed on us from God himself, from what he's done. So I thank you, God, for all that you do. Help us to be bold and courageous and not shrink back when an opportunity comes, Lord. Let us remember what you said and, 
in what you're saying and help us to, to feed off the manna that comes from heaven every day, Lord, not to hoard it up and, and think we're great because we have a lot of knowledge, Lord, but because we have a great relationship and you guide us and you direct us and you show us how to live and where to live and who to talk to and where to do everything, God. Thank you that you're not just in a minority. You're in us, God. You're in us all and you love us and you're here to transform us to be like your dear son. So we thank you for all this in Jesus' name. Amen.